Hey there, beautiful souls. Welcome back to my channel. I am the Soul Leader. So really quick, I wanted to read to you Psalms 81. I was reading Psalms, well, I was reading different Bible verses that the Lord was leading me to, but this one in particular ties into what this video is about to be about, what I'm about to share with you. So let me read Psalm 81 to you, and then I'll uh, get into um, what this video is uh, really about. Sing for joy to God, our strength. Shout aloud to God, O Jacob. Begin the music, strike the tambourine. Play the melodious harp and lyre. Sound the ram's horn at the new moon, and when the moon is full on the day of our feast. This is a decree for Israel, an ordinance of God of Jacob. He established it as a statue for Joseph when he went out against Egypt, where we heard a language we did not understand. He says, I removed the burden from their shoulders. Their hands were set free from the basket. In your distress, you called and I rescued you. I answered you out of a thundercloud. I tested you at the waters of Mariba. Salah. Hear, O oh my people, and I will warn you. If you would, be, if you would but listen to me, O oh Israel, you should have no foreign god among you you should not bow down to an alien god i am the lord your god who brought you out of egypt open wide your mouth and i will fill it but my people would not listen to me israel would not submit to me so i gave them over to their stubborn hearts to follow their own devices if my people would, would but listen to me if israel would follow my ways how quickly would I subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their foes? Those who hate the Lord would cringe before him, and their punishment would last forever. But you will be fed with the finest of wheat, with honey from the rock. I will satisfy you. Now, when I was reading that, I wasn't expecting to get that message. And I had had a thought come across me about particularly when God was saying, um, you know, um, if you would listen and let and, and and what he would do to your enemies, right? Well, to my enemies, I'm, I'm speaking of myself right now. Um, and I remember in the beginning when I decided to leave my relationship for good, like I've been, you know, was mentally checked out. But um, I remember this one particular day back in July of 2021. And I was at work one day. And this was when I was um, waking up. In that day, I was really disoriented and it was noticeable, but it was one coworker, she knew what was going on. Like, and she kept asking me, are you okay, are you okay? And on that particular day, my ex was um, texting me some really mean things. And just around that time, I had already broken up with them, like maybe a day before or something like that. And they wasn't trying to hear that. And the things that they were saying to me was really getting to me because it was one thing to what the Lord was saying to me, and then it was another of what they were saying to me. So I can't even really explain what that feeling was, but it felt like a cracking in my mind. And I felt really glitched, like my speech was off and everything that whole day, but I was still able to get my, my job done once I um, got focused on the task and I just dealt with my personal matters outside of work once I was off. But that same day, that day when I said, I, I can't do this anymore. Sorry about that, as I was saying, I had to pause for a second. So on that particular day, you know, I was having that cracking in my mind, you know, because, you know, reading a word and what the Lord said about me, says about me, well, all of us, what the Lord says about us. And what this one person was doing in that moment, like, it, it was horrible. But let's just say, when I decided to really leave, trust me, it was a battle. I was fighting with God because it's like I wanted something to work so bad that I think, I'm not even going to say think, I know I angered God so much that day that he was like, move. Like, God never speaks to me like that. But when he did that day, it was no question about whether to stay in a relationship or not. I cared more about how God felt about me. And so I moved upon what he said. And ever since I have been coming into a place of peace, I have been being very independent as I was before I ever got in a relationship. I've been able to release. I've been able to uh, just move forward. Now, moving forward don't mean, um, give me that for you. 
moving forward does not mean um like once you remove and let things out of your life like you get all this money and all these things whatever i don't know how other people look at abundance but i feel like i'm abundant in my spirit i have not ever had this before so just knowing i'm abundant in my spirit i'm okay with things in my physical life not being how i desire it to be at the moment because this is a process it took a process for me to even get brought down so low so it's a process to be to raise my own vibration you get what i'm saying so you know when i think about the letting go letting go my mom letting go my ex you know um it was difficult, but the best choice for me because once I had let go instantly, these people come and came straight down on them. Like, literally, I even remember times in my life outside of a relationship with my mom with other people who would, like, do things. And as I'm not a person who, like, if I ever hurt somebody, I didn't even know. And then once you tell me, I try to fix it. I, I reassure you that I'm sincere in my ways, but... A lot of time you get persecuted for always doing the righteous things. You know, like, um, for instance, like, I remember even in um, cosmetology school. And a lot of people didn't like the fact that I have a lot of knowledge in cosmetology. I do. I really enjoyed it. It was like, um, a lot of girls, they didn't take it serious. I did. And, um... Even though I had a lot going on, I remember like my state school teacher said something to me, talking about I had to be technical all the time. And I'm like, well, if I'm not technical, then how can I speak cosmetology language if I'm dumbing myself down to speak regular terms like everybody else? It's like in any um, career field, there's a certain language you speak. So if I, I would be wrong if I'm telling these girls, wash your hair. No, you wash clothes, you wash your body. When, you're, when it's your hair, you shampoo your hair. You don't wash your hair. So when I would say the correct terms that I was learning, sometimes she would say something, you know, or I get overlooked for things, you know, but the only person that didn't overlook me was our the theoretical teacher. And he stood up for me. He clapped for me. You know, he spoke really highly of me and I never had nobody show up for me like that. So I'm only sharing this with you to let you know, like, it, it'll be people that will come into your life some most of them will come to destroy you but don't allow people to destroy you and when the lord tells you to move and to let something go let it go don't hold on to it because there's a consequence you'll receive karma for that and i received my karma for many a years until i decided to let go and what i mean is i don't look at it as a bad thing i was receiving that karma because i was trying to hold on to something that didn't belong to me you get what i'm saying like even if we were together for so long to me, regardless of how much I love that person, it meant nothing because when you think about people's actions during a whole 10, 11 year period, was their actions like actions of moving towards building or marriage or anything? It was none of those things. So when the Lord told me to move, I instantly moved because I cared more about what would happen to me and what the Lord thinks. I already was aware of what was happening to me for so long. So why stay in this situation and ignore what the Lord says do? That's just like a video um, that I have to post. I was supposed to post it, but it's on my phone. So I have to get that out. Um, I almost didn't post it and I cried about it. I recorded it before I had recorded it the second time. And I cried about it, but the Lord was like, no, you got to get it out there. So even though I don't want to be telling none of my business, I don't want to share no part of my life. I'm only sharing it because God told me to. He told me it's going to help you. So because I know it's going to help you. And this is also an a area of my life that he know I'm compassionate about. He know I love to help people. He know I share my wisdom regardless. This is not just my wisdom. Like what I mean it is my own experience i have experienced some things and it's like once i learn from something or learn something new i can't help but share it that's just me and i'm really thankful he's allowing me to do that you know this channel is not like i'm some prophet like oh read this read that no if i am reading any bible verse i'm gonna share it with you because i know it's gonna help you if it's anything i've been through and i can share i'm going to do that any story that the Lord say, oh, remember this that happened in your life, share that. I'm going to do that because your soul matters. 
Your soul matters and your healing matters. I really want humanity to heal their broken hearts. I want people to experience God and experience God's wisdom and experience God's spirit. You know, um, and that's what I've been experiencing the whole time. It's like, even though I've been met with so many challenges over the past 10 years, I still always end up on top. And I never really looked at it that way until now. I never understood it until now. It's like this. Sometimes we want something so bad, but when God says no, he says no. You know, like, why would the Lord want you to suffer? Why would the Lord want you to be somebody's doormat? And I allowed myself to be a doormat because of love. And now I realize love is not enough to be a doormat. It's not, it's billions of people out on this earth. And there's many of people who are like-minded, just like you, who are willing to love you carefully, you know? So don't, don't um stay where you don't belong. And when the Lord orders you to let something go, let it go. It's not worth you uh, being bitter and scorn. It's not worth you being broke and lonely. And, uh, it's not worth your heart hardening. It's not worth you going cold. It's really not. You know, when you're with somebody that brings out the best in you, you man, forget being with somebody. Let, let me take that back. Be the best you for you first. And then those type of people can come into your life. So I'm in this video. Because it seems like every time when I try to record, one of the kids either be sleep or someplace else and then they come and make all this noise. So I hope that this was helpful to you. Peace and blessings, beautiful souls. Until next time, let me help you and together we can help one another. Peace and blessings.